Hi, I'm Michael Yagni, and our property markets have turned the corner. And there are more people interested in getting into property investment. However, if history repeats itself, and it most likely will, while some will develop financial freedom through property, many investors just won't get past their first or second property. So how do you succeed? Where do you start? There are so many options out there. Everyone seems to have an opinion, of course, too, don't they? And I guess you've probably noticed many of their suggestions are conflicting. So to start you on the right path, today I'd like to help you by suggesting 10 questions that need to be thought about by pro property investors before buying a property. So the first question I'd like you to consider is, what do you want to achieve? Is it money? Is it wealth? Is it financial freedom? Maybe all of the above. Remember, the bricks and mortar are not really the end goal, rather they're just a vehicle to help you get there. So first, identify your end goal and then formulate a plan to get you there in the time frame that works for you. See, property investment, as with any other journey, requires you to know where you're heading and how you intend to get there. Unfortunately, most investors don't have a plan and that's why they get lost along the way or they get distracted by the latest information or the latest investment fed or the next hotspot. If they do have a plan, they rarely review it to make sure they're on track. The second question is, what's my preferred strategy? Once you know where you're going, you need to implement an investment strategy that helps you get there. Since you can't save your way to wealth, my goal is to build a substantial asset base through capital growth. I've got a four-stranded strategic approach to achieve that. I buy properties below their intrinsic value in areas that have always had a long, strong history of capital growth, but that are going to continue growing strongly. The third strand to my four-stranded approach is I look for properties with a twist, something special, something unique, something different about them. And the fourth component, the fourth strand is I look for properties where I can add value through manufacturing some capital growth through renovations or development. The third question you should ask yourself is, what type of property should I be looking for? You need to own the right type of property. One that's going to be in continuous strong demand from both owner occupiers, they're the ones who push up the values, and tenants, they're the ones who are going to pay your rent. Today, more people are trading their backyards for balconies, and that's why I prefer in a suburban apartment style accommodation as the preferred style of investment in most capital cities. The fourth question you should ask yourself is, should I buy something old or should I buy something new? More often than not, new or off-the-plan apartments are a box in a high-rise monolith. The problem here is that you're paying a premium uh, to the developer and you end up missing out on a number of years' capital growth. At the same time, the majority of owners in those new buildings are likely to be investors. I prefer buying where there are owner occupiers in the block, people who are going to look after the building better. If you haven't guessed it by now, I prefer buying established properties. Maybe an established apartment with a bit of character, in a character-filled block. Maybe something with a bit of potential to be tarted up with some cosmetic refurbishments. This gives you the potential not only to increase your rental income, but to manufacture some capital growth. Okay, back to the question you should be asking yourself. The next question, I guess, is where should I buy? Location is obviously critical to the long-term performance of your investment. I look for suburbs that have always outperformed the averages, and others that are going through gentrification, you know, where they're lifestyle suburbs which are now past their use by date and young people are coming in and uh, having a bit more money and can afford to live in those areas. So that's what gentrification is. And we also look for suburbs close to the capital cities, close to the CBDs, close to water, close to all the amenities, the lifestyle suburbs. And then I drill down even further and choose the best spots in those suburbs. The sixth question you should ask yourself is, when should I buy? While there are investment opportunities at most times, i found most of my successful investments have been made by going against the crowd and buying when most people are worried about the market, people sitting on the sideline. You know, that's called counter-cyclical investing. The seventh question you should consider is, what can I afford? Before you start looking at what to buy, you need to know what you can afford. I'd suggest you get a loan pre-approved and make sure you get some funds set aside for acquisition costs, for holding costs, for, for, and for a financial buffer for a rainy day or for when interest rates rise. The next question, the eighth question is, well, how do I set up my purchase? It's important, you see, to understand the entity that's going to own your property. You want to do, buy it in the entity that will protect your assets and legally minimise your taxes. It could be your own name, it could be in a super fund, it could be in a trust, 
but you need to be aware what this means for you and your family now and in the future. So you should get good accounting advice. The next question actually follows on from that. Well, who should I ask for help? If you're the smartest person in your team, you're in the wrong team. Real estate's a team sport requiring expert input advice from qualified accountants, a smart solicitor, a finance broker, an independent property strategist, and a mentor who will help you set yourself up to win. And maybe the last question you should ask is, should I take advice from my friends and family? And in general, the answer is no. Not unless you've, they've invested successfully themselves through a number of property cycles. This is because, in general, the average investor is usually wrong. When everybody's optimistic, people come out of the woodwork and give you all this well-meaning advice. However, investors tend to be most optimistic when the cycle's at its peak, in fact, when the risk's the greatest. Just like the pessimistic at times when the property market's flat, and you know, the risk of further downside is low. So as our real estate markets pick up and the cycle moves on, a whole new generation of investors are going to enjoy prosperity uh, from their property markets. If you ask the right questions, you could be one of them. So what are you going to do about this now? Owning real assets is a powerful wealth creator. And with our property markets moving on, a whole new generation of property millionaires are going to be created, as I suggested. But as I said, also, if history repeats itself, most people getting involved in property won't. They won't become financially independent. They won't get past their second or third property. Many will buy the wrong properties or at the wrong time or in the wrong location. With so many mixed messages out there about what sort of property to buy, what makes a good investment, it's hard to know who to listen to. It's hard to know who to trust. If you're looking for independent advice, no one can help you quite like the independent property investment strategist at Metropole. Remember, the multi-award winning team of Metropole have no properties to sell, so their advice is unbiased. Whether you're a beginning or a seasoned investor, we'd love to help you formulate an investment strategy or review your existing portfolio and help make some uh, suggestions to take your property investments to the next level. So please contact us at Metropole. You can click the link below or call us on 1300 20 30 30. When you come to our offices to have a chat, you'll get the latest uh, DVD set, a two DVD program I've just created, Building Wealth Through Property Investment. So now you have 10 questions to ask. You know what to ask, and you even know somebody to speak to. Have a chat with the team at Metropole, and uh, we would love to be part of your wealth creation strategy.